In this lecture, I will provide main definitions and key issues in order to prove the rule and importance of groundwater for the achievement of some of the Sustainable Development Goals of 2030 United Nations Agenda. The term groundwater is reserved for the subsurface water that occurs in geological formations where the whole porosity, interstices, fractures, conduits, is fully saturated. Hydrogeology deals with physical, chemical and biological tools studying groundwater flow, solutes and contaminants transported by groundwater and mechanical, thermal and chemical interactions between geological porous medium and groundwater. Groundwater attains the 98% of the total volume of liquid freshwater of the hydrosphere and almost the 25% of all fresh water on the planet Earth, the remainder portion pertaining almost exclusively to ice sheets and glaciers. Do you know where groundwater is located? The natural underground geological reservoirs of groundwater are termed aquifers, from ancient Latin conveyors of water. Typical examples of aquifers are sands, gravels or karst units. The natural underground low permeability barriers, obstacles to groundwater flow, are termed aquiclutes, closed up systems to water, or aquitards, slow flow units like clays or marls. They provide protection to the salinization and contamination of aquifers, but at the same time are cause of risk conditions for the subsidence effects in overexploited settings. Groundwater flows below our feet almost everywhere at a variety of depths, inside the shallowest portion of continental crust and with a variety of rates, from meters per second in karst down to meters per several millennia in poorly permeable formations. Groundwater is a valuable resource and it is subjected worldwide to strong exploitation. More updated statistics on groundwater abstraction at full planet scale are available for 2010. Global withdrawals are estimated to have passed 900 cubic kilometers per year, providing some 36% of potable water supply 42% of water for irrigated agriculture and 24% of direct industrial water supply. Estimates of rates of permanent storage depletion are in the range 100-145 cubic kilometers per year during 2000-2008. The huge volume of groundwater reservoirs along with storage times varying from decades to thousands of years and the poor flow velocity, if compared to rivers, provide an excellent buffer against the effects of climate variability. But questions arise as to how naturally resilient is groundwater to the quantitative and qualitative effects of global and particularly of climate change. Two are the critical parameters to be evaluated in order to properly manage the exploitation of aquifers – recharge and safe yield. Recharge is the hydrological process that provides water to the aquifer. Direct recharge from rainfall and snowfall through infiltration, indirect recharge from surface runoff, and incidental recharge from men's activities are the components. The safe yield or sustainable yield is the maximum allowable withdrawal of groundwater provide sustainability to the whole system in order not to overcome natural recharge rates, increase the drawdown of water table by eye on the depth of existing pumping wells, induce salinization, contamination or subsidence effects, induce adverse effects against groundwater-dependent ecosystems. The combined impacts of global warming, land use change, 
groundwater exploitation and groundwater contamination must be quantified in order to evaluate the resilience and the risk of impairment of groundwater resources. In ideal sustainable conditions, groundwater systems, aquifers, provide valuable ecological services for a variety of aims related to the SDG of 2030 United Nations Agenda at, at the same time are the main receiving water bodies potentially subjected to quantitative stresses over exploitation or to qualitative impairment, contamination. In order to achieve SDG number six, related to safe water for all, groundwater resources need protection from quantitative and qualitative impairment. The achievement of SDG targets 6.1 and 6.3, respectively, universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water and conserving water quality of receiving water bodies is based upon mapping of aquifers and recharge areas along with the evaluation of vulnerability of aquifers to pollution. The achievement of SDG targets 6.4 and 6.6 .6, respectively, management and reduction of water stress and restoring and protecting water-related ecosystems is based upon estimation of groundwater recharge along with identification and protection of GDE, groundwater-dependent ecosystems. It requires a special focus on drought security and evaluation of long-term sustainability of the local base flow of streams as guaranteed by groundwater discharge. Which is one of the main consequences of main activities in this context? Contamination of groundwater resources is the only one of geological risks – earthquakes, volcanoes, landslides, floods, tsunamis and coastal erosion – where the source of a hazard is represented by man's activities, whereas the resilience of the resource is provided by nature hydrogeological system and not by anthropic measures. Source of pollution may be diffuse, agrochemicals and fertilizers, or point origin, dumps, industrial and municipal spills, road accidents. The vulnerability is the capability of the hydrogeological system to protect groundwater from contamination originating from above at the ground surface. Contaminated sites are one of the major threats to groundwater resources. From improper or illegal dumping or wastes originate plumes of contamination migrating down gradient. Plumes originate either by leachate or by dissolution of NAPL, not aqueous phase liquids, either lighter hydrocarbons or denser than water chlorinated solvents. Various tools of hydrogeological investigations contribute to protect groundwater resources. Monitoring natural attenuation of contaminants, modeling of flow and transport, chemical or isotopical tools to identify the polluters in order to applicate the polluter pace principle for the restoration of the damages to the environment. In conclusion, also, your everyday behavior is fundamental in order to protect groundwater resources. If you leave the tap open during all your teeth brushing, you are wasting water resources. If you throw toxic garbage in a specific municipal collector, you are correctly avoiding contamination. Protection of groundwater resources stands upon a detailed knowledge of hydrogeological processes and their physical chemical quantification.